Welcome to Mountainous Green Switzerland, Blockchain Nation and the base of the Cardano Foundation. As the different teams and the foundations continue their efforts to drive blockchain technology and increase adoption, I want to take a few minutes to ensure everyone is well informed about what the foundation does and why. After all, transparency, governance and accountability are three key aspects of a blockchain but they require all participants to have access to adequate information. So today, we will not only give an overview of the Cardano Foundation strategy, but put it in such a way that everyone can understand it. I will also take some time to explain how the Foundation's actions and works fit into this strategy. For that, we will position the Foundation's 2022 activities into the larger strategy. Let's get to it. Put simply, the Cardano Foundation focuses on driving adoption of the Cardano blockchain. We are working to make the Cardano blockchain a base layer for current and future financial and social systems. This means we act on multiple fronts. Broadly speaking, the Foundation functions under three core ideas. Operational resilience, education and adoption. Operational resilience is all about a base to build from. It implies maintaining the Cardano blockchains, both updating it and making sure it continues as a robust, reliable and resilient technology. This creates the conditions for wider adoption and puts the Cardano blockchain on the road to become an enterprise critical technology, one that businesses and institutions can rely and trust upon to run their operations. Of course, for blockchain to truly reach its potential, First, there needs to be a widespread understanding of what blockchain is, how it works, and what it can and cannot do. Because even though blockchain truly has the ability to help change the world for the better, there are also limits to what it can do, and certain things for which blockchain isn't the right tool. So a good portion of the Foundation's activities are focused on sharing quality information and contributing both to the blockchain education and blockchain research. This involves a variety of aspects. We produce content and constantly communicate about blockchain. Different teams across the foundation also provide consultancy to enterprises and institutions. We engage with policymakers and regulators to get their perspective, to clarify concepts and to share our expertise. Our teams also get involved in educational programs, participate in discussion panels and help research centers doing work on blockchain technology. The more informed people are, the more confident they feel in adopting blockchain. This is especially important for legacy systems upgrading to blockchain technology. On the other hand, the foundation also assists the development of blockchain native companies, those that were born because of blockchain and have always been part of the blockchain ecosystem. Their business models revolve around our technology. In addition, the foundation also supports radical innovation of operating models. We have yet to truly see it happen at scale, but as long as they are contributing to positive change and the betterment of everyone's condition on our beautiful planet, the Cardano Foundation will happily hear them out. For the foundation, however, adoption means more than establishing partnerships. It also means creating the conditions to increase blockchain utility. Open source plays a key role here, and it helps create solutions that benefit the entire present and future ecosystem. This leads to a situation where we can ensure the business critical infrastructure of the Cardano blockchain. Now, examples helps a lot in visualizing all this. So let me use some of our activities to give context to those three core ideas and illustrate what the foundation does for each one of them. Take the work of the foundation's integration team. They're one of the teams in the technical department and play a key role in the lead up to a hard fork combinator event, like last year's Vassal hard fork combinator. The team not only provides information about how the different parties interact with the Cardano blockchain, but crucially also gives technical assistance to exchanges, helping them to execute and verify the upgrade. This falls squarely into the operational resilience. So does work of our infrastructure team. On the other hand, they look after the Cardano Foundation's own infrastructure and they support some of our partnerships by setting up a number of test nets for research and testing purposes. They are now also responsible for the bug bounty program, used to find and correct vulnerabilities in Cardano assets. 
This means increasing the security and resilience of the Cardano blockchain. The Cardano improvement process, better known as the SIP process, is the heart of the change management process of Cardano. It is a program maintained by the Cardano Foundation and driven by the community. It offers a unique way for developers, builders, and other technical members of the Cardano community to help shape the future of the Cardano blockchain. It's an instance of operational resilience directly propelled and fully monitored by the community. Through a very transparent process, the technical community proposes improvements or solutions to different challenges and then receives feedback in order to perfect each proposal. We at the Cardano Foundation hope the SIP process will solidify its purpose as the primary mechanism for collecting input on issues and proposing new features and for documenting design decisions either suggested or already implemented on the Cardano blockchain. The developer portal is again another example of operational resilience. It helps anyone to get started on Cardano. The Foundation's community team designed it to explore solutions and application integrations on Cardano. It offers explanations about components, technical concepts, and has helpful instructions that directly link to libraries and resources. How does this fit into operational resilience? In a public permissionless blockchain such as Cardano, the more people participate on the chain, the more secure the network becomes, and the more the robust it gets. The developer portal lists the steps for Cardano enthusiasts and indeed anyone else to join our technical ecosystem. Of course, when we talk about the developer portal, there is also a few links to education. In fact, a lot of the foundation's activities have some relationship to education. Our marketing and communication departments are quite active here and assist the other departments in the foundation to effectively talk about blockchain and present it to the multiple stakeholders. In 2022 alone, the foundation participated in more than 20 events, providing insights and imparting knowledge about the advantages of leveraging blockchain. We also keep assisting a range of businesses and institutions by giving consulting sessions and implementation advice. What all this does is to ensure multiple parties receive adequate, up-to-date information about blockchain and that leads them to better understand how blockchain could help solve real-world problems or enhance their operations. We do similar work with policymakers and regulators. We already seen regulation being passed about blockchain that doesn't fully comprehend the technology and everything is used for. So the foundation engages with those playing a role in setting legislation to make sure they understand that blockchain goes far beyond crypto. Not just that, but also that blockchain has plenty of use cases outside finance. For that exact reason, we always advocate for a nuanced and innovation-friendly approach to blockchain regulation. We did so when during 2022, we met with regulators and policymakers from Brussels to Singapore. We did it again when replying to requests for consultation from international bodies. The foundation's legal department has an instrumental role here. To give just one example, the legal department was at the forefront of submitting a response to the recent public consultation conducted by the Financial Stability Board. All this activity together with the prevalence of misunderstanding about blockchain and its potential made it quite clear to us that there is an urgent need for reliable and comprehensive blockchain education. A course that gives technical foundations and also speaks to blockchain utility and blockchain use cases for third generation blockchains. So the Cardano Foundation set about to create one. We announced it in November 2022 during the Cardano Summit and will be making it available soon. Right now, this is a major part of the work done by the technical department's educational team. The Cardano Summit, an annual celebration of the Cardano community and an activation event for building on Cardano is yet another key aspect in our efforts towards education. Last year, the Cardano Foundation took on the responsibility of organizing the summit. From the get-go, we wanted to not only focus on the Cardano community, but create a way where the community could contribute to the summit and encourage them to be a part of the natural evolution of Cardano and its governance. This meant establishing sessions and workshops that could give all blockchain enthusiasts and anyone remotely curious about blockchain a lot of food for thought. In fact, we want to invite discussions about blockchain to have people think critical about it, ponder it, test it. 
That's why last year the Cardano Foundation started a partnership with the University of Zurich. Different people in the foundation are now lecturers in the university's summer school. We are also sponsoring a PhD position in blockchain analytics, contributing to a holistic perspective of blockchain technology that sees it not just from a technical perspective, but fully considers its social and economic aspects. The more we test, deploy, research, and investigate blockchain, the better it becomes. Naturally, this improvement also contributes to making blockchain an enterprise-critical technology. So we again go a bit deeper into the next core idea. I'm talking about adoption and how it requires having a technology that can accommodate various needs of the financial and social systems. For this, the engineering team in the technical department is both overseeing the outsourcing of work the foundation has identified as crucial and building in-house software. A great example here is the Cardano ballot. The foundation needed a voting application to use when choosing the winners of the Cardano summit and to give the community the decision power to select speakers for day two of the summit. So the engineering team developed the Cardano ballot. It uses the unique advantages of blockchain for voting and even some features which are unique to Cardano and has every vote verified on chain. So there is an immutable, reliable record without compromising the anonymity of the voters. The ballot is free to use and gave the community an open source wallet connector to easily connect and authenticate a Cardano wallet. The foundation is keen to provide more such open source tools. Why? And why do we believe it's crucial to encourage the open source maturity of the ecosystem? Because when everyone has access to open source repositories, more people can add meaningful contribution. It means way more participants working for the same goal and using their expertise to create solutions. It also means the decision-making process for developing technology is transparent. That's available for everyone to see, scrutinize and take part in. It leads to better governance. That's why the Cardano Foundation has long believed in open source and why we will keep on championing open source for the Cardano ecosystem. Further to this, already huge advantage, it opens up a proven tangible path for economic sustainability of the Cardano blockchain in the centuries to come. Because of this, we formally started an open source team within the technical department in 2022. The team both assists in open source efforts from the community and creates open source tools. Think of ICANN, for example, a new programming language and tool to make the process of creating smart contracts on Cardano even faster. We are hoping it will make everyone's life easier, and because it's open source, it can keep on being developed and perfected outside of the foundation. Others can also use and adapt it to even more innovative purposes, which we never contemplated. That's the beauty of open source. We want as many people as possible participating in the ecosystem of the Cardano blockchain and being heard. We will be doing exactly that for the members-based organization that IOG announced in November 2022. The foundation will collect feedback from the community. We have already taken steps to start the process, and I expect we will soon provide some updates. In fact, the Cardano Foundation is working on quite a few projects, and I can't wait to talk more about it. We announced two new wonderful collaborations last year, one with the Georgian National Wine Agency and the other with Switzerland for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Both give a good example of blockchain utility at play and show the possibilities of the future. We talked about adoption, education, and operational resilience. I'll be talking a lot more about this in the future and going into details about each one. For now, I hope we made these minutes worth your time and provided you with a clear overview of what the Cardano Foundation does and why. Blockchain truly is a beautiful technology, full of possibilities. We hope you also see its potential and come join us on this journey as blockchain citizens. We also love to know what you want to hear from us. So please reach out and leave your thoughts on any of our social channels. See you next time.